Who were the giants of the Levant? Do we have any accounts or records of them? Or is it just a myth? The Bible is famous for its account of Levantine giants. Goliath was six cubits and a span, or over nine feet tall, according to 1 Samuel. The giant OG's 13-foot-long bed actually became a museum piece in the biblical account, Deuteronomy. An Egyptian mercenary seven and a half feet tall chronicles. Tall tribes, Anakim, Nephilim, Rephaim, which terrified the Israelite spies scouting the promised land, the spies overdramatized them as making the Israelites look like grasshoppers, in comparison, to persuade the Israelites to turn back to Egypt. Giants in Canaan are easily passed off as fanciful biblical myths. But did you know that there is contemporary material detailing the existence, and even heights, of giants of the Levant? Papyrus Onostosi I is an Egyptian literary text from the 19th dynasty, around the 13th century BCE. It is a scribal training sheet that includes numerous important historical details about the early Levant, including the names of towns throughout Canaan and Syria. The text mentions a Levantine tribe called Shasu and its warriors, the Valley region, is infested with Shasu, some of them are of four cubits or of five cubits, from head to foot, fierce of face, their heart is not mild, and they hearken not to coaxing. That may not mean anything to a modern reader, but to Egyptians familiar with their royal cubit length, that was a truly impressive size. In modern terminology, Four to five Egyptian cubits is from just under seven feet to eight feet, seven inches tall. There is also the depiction of Shasu captives on an Egyptian wall relief depicting the Battle of Kadesh, 1274 BCE. It shows two captured Shasu spies being beaten by a horde of Egyptians. Often in such ancient artwork, national dominance was shown by the size of the individuals depicted. But this Kadesh image depicts, in very realistic style, large Shasu males compared to their victorious Egyptian counterparts. Thus, together with Papyrus on Ostosii, highlighting members of Shasu society as reaching very tall heights. Still, little is known about the Shasu people. The earliest known reference dates to a Levantine peoples list from the 15th century BCE. We know from 13th century BCE Pharaoh Mernecta's inscriptions that they were on the scene at the same time as the early Israelites. Egyptian artwork depicts them dressed in a clearly Canaanite manner. The Kadesh inscriptions relate that they served in a limited mercenary sense alongside the Hittites. 13th century BCE Egyptian texts relate six different tribes of Shasu. Perhaps all or only certain of them were predisposed to reach tall statures. Whatever the case, they lived specifically in the southern Levant, in the region of the Philistines, Canaan, and Transjordan, thus fitting with the biblical locations of giant peoples. They also disappear from the archaeological record during the early Iron Age, late biblical judges early kings period, the same time in which the biblical references to them end. The association by the Onostosi Papyrus with a Levantine Valley region is interesting given the Bible specifically highlights a valley of Rephaim, one of the giant tribes famous to this day as the bustling Emek Rephaim, which descends from Jerusalem. There are several other extra-biblical references. The early 2nd millennium BCE Egyptian execration texts name the people of Anak, the same title given in the Bible, Anak, meaning giant. And as for the biblical giant Og, he is referenced in a later, circa 500 BCE Phoenician inscription as the mighty Og. Og was a king of the Rephaim, based at Ashtaroth and Edre, Joshua. A 1200 BCE Canaanite tablet from Ugarit mentions a deified great king Rapu, a name linked to Rephaim. May Rapu, king of eternity, drink wine, the god enthroned in Ashtarat, the god who rules in Edre. The combination of names Rapia, Ashtaroth, and Edre are a remarkable link to the biblical account of Og and the Rephaim. Could it even be a reference to this king himself? It has been suggested that Og was simply a title meaning man of Vela. It's easy to pass off some of the earliest biblical accounts as simple myth. But even when it comes to giants, the biblical record holds alongside the archaeological evidence. So what do you think? Leave your comments below. Thank you for watching.